with the one and only Drew Barrymore. Now, Drew. Oh, I love it. I love it. Come on. The greatest. Come on. The greatest. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. Drew, uh, uh, we're a few months into the new year, and uh, you told me that your mantra for this year, 2022, is the year of no. K-N-O-W. That's right. The yeah. Year no. The year of no. What does this mean? Like Carson, Kreskin. Yeah. Um, Kreskin, yeah. Oh, the best. Yeah. Um, I, the, yeah, last year was the year of less. Um, okay. Do you want less of things? Yes, I'm very um, maximalist, gluttonous, live in extremes, big personality, nuts, you know, a little bit. <laughs> um, and, but a, a student of life, always working on myself, and every day I get a little bit better, hopefully. Yeah. Um, and so I thought, what if I took this year as, um, you know, just trying to be really aware of everything I'm learning. I feel like we're constantly, I'm constantly one step forward, a step back. And I just thought if I could have more confidence in what I know. And I don't know about you guys, but my inner dialogue is not kind. And I would never speak or treat anyone the way I treat myself. And knowing that, that's the year of no, knowing things, recognizing it. Even if you're going on a date with someone, we all kind of hard launch and like, what is the future gonna bring? Just enjoy things. Don't worry about the future and the past. Everyone says, try to be present, try to have balance. I get so irritated when they talk like that, but maybe they're right. So <laughs> that, that makes you more irritated. Yes, yeah. which is yeah. even more patronizing yeah, like, oh, you are and right. annoying. Gosh, so, yeah. I'm like, instead of the year of running around like the crazy headless chicken, what if I try to act like this year that everything I learn um, is something I can truly keep and the knowledge is there and just have a little more faith in myself? I love this. This is fantastic. I love that you do that. I mean, you... The, the one thing, uh, another great thing about the show is you really just put yourself out there. And, and, and a good example, I remember you had uh, the cast of Queer Eye come oh on. Oh my God, it and changed do a, my life. A makeover for you, and had you do an actual live date. Yes. And you filmed it, and you showed uh, you going on a live Zoom date. Yeah, which I, I thought the idea of a Zoom date was like hell on earth. I don't know why, but it, I'm so is IRL. It? You know what I mean? It, in real life. Yeah, yes. you're so IRL. I'm yeah. so IRL that I'm I was like, there's no way. I'm not like a Zoom day. I know. A and Zoom day. I, 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 I tried it. It turns out it's not as prophylactic weird as it seems. I guess uh -huh. we're all sort of kind of. This is the new normal. The water's out of the bottle. It's not going back in. It's dating apps and Zooms. And maybe you can look at it as a positive of a screener or a time saver. I don't know. I still want to meet someone the old-fashioned way. Right? I want to, you know, I wrote actually a paper that I'm going to put on my blog because I love writing and I have a blog and I've written books and sometimes you just get inspired. And I, I walked up to a guy in a park and I was like, are you single? And Did his brain explode out of his head? Um, and he was like, perhaps. And I said, well, that's not no. <laughs> so I'll take perhaps. And then I, I was like, are you gay? Because I also always bark up the wrong tree. <laughs> and he was like, no, I'm not. And then we got to talking, and we had such a good laugh and such a lovely talk. And um, then I was like, ooh, I think I forgot to ask you a very important question. How old are you? Oh. And he was like 28. And I was like, ah! Oh, no! <laughs> oh, no! Oh, come on. And I was like, I don't mean this rudely. You look so much older. <laughs> and he was like, it's funny because it's a joke amongst my friends. They all, th we, it's a joke in my life. I look much older. Yeah. And I was like, you do. Yeah. You, got, um, you had a great afternoon. Take, have a great life. And, and I just said, Okay, that was so fun, and, and thank you so much. We had a great conversation, and we didn't bother with the obligatory, like, let's exchange numbers. And I just said, great. I'm, I said, I got to tell you, I'm, I just wanted to do something that I could make myself proud today. And he goes, you, I'm proud of you. And I was like, thanks. Fantastic. We got to hang out more. I... And we walked away, and it was the most positive experience. I want to do it again. Was it dating apps that stopped us from going up to people and asking yeah. them out? 
Now we don't have to worry about public rejection. We can just hide behind the app. Forget it. I'm over it. I want to. I want to talk to people IRL. Yes. One at a time. Let's go through the audience. Who won? <laughs> 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 I want to see, uh, speaking of doing something again, you did something on your show. You do a thing called Druth or Dare every yes. now and then. At the end of every end of show, show. And segment seven, on our way out. Druth or Dare, you did one. And I'll do anything. And it made me laugh. And it was, uh, here was the dare. Try to eat a lemon wedge and not react. Yeah. Now, people have been doing this online. It's on TikTok. It is called the Lemon Challenge or something. Let's do it, because I want to start a movement, because I was shocked to find out how much I suck at this. All right, so we'll just grab a wedge and we'll go for it. This is the lemon challenge. And have you ever done it? Never. Am okay. I'm going to try to pretend that I'm fine. Okay, great. Like, Good. Big deal. It's Let's do this. Yeah, of course. Cheers, bud. Awesome. Cheers. Cheers. Nice to It's just sour. It's, it's just so sour, but it was good at the beginning part. And by the way, these are good lemons. There's a quality lemon here. Yeah, here's a decent lemon right there. Uh, uh, just going for it. Come on, that's a trooper. Drew Barrymore, everybody. Can you be cooler? Can you be cool? There's no cooler. I can't believe nobody's worn this sweatshirt no, all this time. No one rocks it like you. I mean, look at the shoe, everything. You know how to do it. Pink Come on, shoe, bud. pink the lip. The pink lip. You know the deal. I got to say, uh, you know, I watch your show every single day. I love it. Uh, congrats on that. The Drew Barrymore oh. show is awesome. Uh, and I, I, it's... I love it. I love There's so many things about it I love, but it was your birthday the other day. Happy belated. Thank you. 2 It's so crazy. I, I mean, like, I was born in 75, 1975. <laughs> yeah, of course. Um, and you just don't even think about that future date. Like, it's, it's almost a surreal thing. Yeah. Um, like the year 2000 seemed nuts. Remember, we were all going to party like it's 1999. It just, yeah, you Y2K, know, man. I never thought I'd get here, and I've been looking so forward to that uh, auspicious number of a day that we'll kind of only see once in our lifetime. But then you actually were hosting your show on your birthday. I was, which is so happy because I got to wake up with the kids, and then I got to go to work, and our job, our work environment, you guys know it's a family, it's positive. It's like the rest of, you know, your problems kind of dissipate and fade away when you go to work because we're all working on something so positive and multifaceted and that feed our souls. And then I got to go home after work and I walked in and there was a blindfold taped to the door and my, that my daughters had put up there. Okay. And Thank you for clearing that up. And I put it on and I'm led in by my daughters and Olive learned to play happy birthday for me on the piano. She's in lessons, but she taught herself by herself. Come on. And then uh, Frankie and they got me a Fudgy the Whale cake. Carvel, Fudgy the Whale is the best. It's the greatest. It's the greatest cake. And they made me beaded necklaces and then our dog Lucy and, you know, yeah, Gary course. and Lucy yeah. are like twinning. and. And then Lucy jumped on the cake and started eating the whole thing, and dogs cannot have chocolate. Of course. So within a matter of just a minute, the whole place Chaos. looked nuts, and I was like, this is the best birthday ever. Yeah, of course. That's the best. Why not? Is it. I was watching your show, because I was like, they were celebrating on your show, and then you got a surprise from the Go-Go's, and they came on, they zoomed on together, and they gave you this. They made you an honorary Go-Go. I mean, that's me. That's true. They, they, I mean, I mean, they made this for me, <laughs> and because I went and I inducted them into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Here's, I have a photo of that, by the way. This is you doing. This was genius. You did this as you were introing them. You started putting on, you know, a night mask, or whatever, a towel over your head. I felt sort of like, okay, these are the women that, when they came into my life when I was about six years old, they told me, you can do anything you want. You can, I mean, Nan and I made Charlie's Angels. I don't think I would have dared make a Charlie's Angels if it wasn't for the Go-Go's. And what I loved is they didn't say you have to pretend to be a man. You get to be with your girlfriends and do everything you dream. And it was the best sort of tone setter for my entire life. So I was like, how do I pay 
these women Homage. in the right way. And I just thought, I'm gonna go back to when I was a little girl, saw that album cover, and it changed my life forever, and I put the mask it's the on. Best, it was the best moment of the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Oh my God, some, thank you, I was so nervous. Wessa was there, <laughs> and I got a text from him, he said, yo, your girl is crushing it right now. I'm so relieved. And I was like, what, what is she doing? He's like, just wait till you see it. She's introing the Go-Go's, and it's brilliant. Oh my God, I felt so much pressure to get that moment right. How do you say, to someone or a group of people, my life changed because of you. And the whole trajectory I know ties back to seeing these girls um, that just, it, there was such a wow factor to me. It was like the Go-Go's and it. Pippi Longstocking are my DNA. <laughs> <laughs> Pippi Longstocking, of course. Of course, uh, girls I, who are girls who can do anything. Uh, I, I told you already this, but I loved the, your interview with Donny Osmond. I thought it was awesome. I love Donny Osmond. I was he like, dude, it was greatest. great. You and were just great and asked some great questions. That's the part of your show that I love the best because you ask questions, they're like, a lot of the times, they're like, that's the best questions. No one's ever asked me that. Well, thank and you. And I love that you do that. Yeah, I love it. I that was a great freaked one. out for your interview with Dua last night. That was. That's my pal. That was a breakdown of humanity and experience and these are the things I've learned and this is how I've grown. It was so informative. Dula peeps. I, I, I already am like psychotically obsessed with her and now I'm like, oh no, yeah, how- She's actually cooler than you even understand. It hurts. It actually But it hurts. was great to hear her talk about real stuff. Yeah. You know, I, that's she's what we want to do. We want to have fun and lean into comedy, but I need to get real every once in a while because yeah. it's not all- That's why people love you. Oh God! Yeah, because no, it's good. I, you get you get emotional. You you don't afraid to do any of that stuff. I I know our tone of the show is weird, but I'm weird, and I I like comedy. It's medicine to me. I like news. I like uh, you know food and design and human interest and conversations and seeing somebody you've loved your whole life walk out and be like, oh my God, and someone you'd never met before, but you will always remember them after hearing their story. Everybody has a story. Everyone's got a story. Hey.